Pinewood Middle School. Welcome to New Six! Welcome to this week's edition of News 6. Today's program is brought to you by the 6th grade class of Glenwood Middle School in Finley. Finley is located on the Blanchard River, 45 miles south of Toledo. Founded in 1823, it currently has a population of about 45,000 people. Most of us have books we remember from our childhood. Even before we could read, the pictures help make the stories come alive. Reporter Alan Grove has found a special place in Finley where you can see original artwork from some of your favorite books. Hi, I'm Alan Grove, and today we're in the Mazza Gallery at the University of Finley. The Mazza Collection was established in 1982 with only four pieces of art. Now the collection has grown into one of the best in the country. The Mazza Collection is the only collection in the world specializing in the art of children's picture books. We are one of a kind. The purpose of the Mazza Collection simply is to educate children, adults, about the fine art in children's picture books. As you walk around the gallery, you can learn about different aspects of book illustration. Our collection is very unusual because it is art from children's picture books. Therefore, we must have the books out so that you can make the comparison. Uh, anyone coming through, the visitor, can take a look at it and see the differences from the original and how it was reproduced in the book. You know, when our visitors come through here, it is just absolutely exciting to hear some of their comments. Both children and adults simply love the collection. The children love them simply because they're coming from books that they're very familiar with right now. The adults think back when they were children, uh, and so you, that's a very enjoyable time for them to come back and they'll say, oh, I remember that book. This is Alan Grove reporting for News 6. Today, education can be very high-tech with specialized classes and computers. But, but 100 years ago, going to school in Finley was very different. Back then, students went to really small schools with only one teacher. Reporter Ashley Kuhlman tells us more. Hi, I'm Ashley Kuhlman, and we're about to see what school was like back in the good old days. The Little Red Schoolhouse was built in 1864. Cam Taylor says the school is used now to teach students what going to school was like in the 19th century. Project School Bell was written in 1988 to supplement the third grade curriculum dealing with local history. Gives the children the opportunity to experience life as it was in 1864 in a one-room schoolhouse. Children in 1864 or in the 1800s were taught in one classroom, in one building, regardless of their age. And now we have a classroom for each grade level. The teacher was able to teach all levels at the same time by perhaps intermixing different subject areas and letting the older students work with the younger ones. Project School Bell lets students have hands-on experience with the old teaching methods. The children, when they participate in Project School Bell, have the opportunity to have hands-on learning by using slates, quill pens, uh, sitting on the dunce stool, walking on stilts, playing marbles. Usually school was held in the winter and in the summer because of the local children being used by their fathers and their families to do the chores uh, associated with spring planting and fall harvesting. 1864 and today are much the same because the teacher works very closely with the students, is very interactive with parents, and generally has a keen interest in what they're doing. This is Ashley Coleman reporting for News 6.
Today's Kids View question is, who is your favorite author illustrator? Barbara Park because she wrote an interesting series on Judy B. Jones. Judy Bloom because I like chocolate. Tommy DePaulo because of his unique illustrations. Roll Doll because I love peaches. I like the rhymes and the fun-filled words of Dr. Seuss. News 6 Retro. The YMCA has learning programs in all of these areas, but this year they have been working with the school's physical education classes by teaching us aerobic dancing. Let's watch. Have you ever watched a train go by and looked at the different kinds of railroad cars? Since trains carry things a long way, these cars must be made with special care. Reporter Sarah DeWald takes us to visit a company that makes railroad cars right in our own backyard. Hi, I'm Sarah DeWald and we're visiting a Finley business that's always on the right track. Divco Incorporated was founded in 1915 to make railroad cars. Today there are many different kinds of specialized car designs. One of our most popular models of uh, car is called the auto baluster and it's used by the railroads to uh, ballast their lines to level it. They uh, used to do that with a uh, pry bar walking alongside the car dumping ballast by hand. Now we've got a radio controlled version that they can do from a uh, distance and a person holds a handheld transmitter and is able to open and close all the gates on that car. We produce a car that's a 55 foot loading deck, 10 foot, 8 foot wide, and it carries 195 tons of material. To make a product this big requires the right equipment and people who know what they're doing. We use uh, lots of equipment to produce these railroad cars. We use welding equipment, automatic burning equipment, a lot of computer controlled uh, robotics, and uh, paint facilities to be able to uh, manufacture the railroad cars. Mr. Westlake says that if you want to build cars like these, you'll need to study hard. If a sixth grader wanted to get into the uh, business, I would suggest that they uh, really focus on their education. And the more education, the better their opportunities. I would suggest engineering would be a, an excellent skill for the products that DIFCO makes. This is Sarah Dillard reporting for News 6. That's all for this edition of News 6. Be sure to watch next week when News 6 will be brought to you by the 6th grade class of Oakwood Elementary. Goodbye.